Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 16th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Just a quick follow-up on the Realtek ECOS SDK vulnerability. Luckily, no big news and no widespread exploitation in the wild. As of now, I just checked before I started a recording. I added a presentation to the diary to help you inform management as needed. Feel free to use the PowerPoint slides as you see fit and, well, uh, modify them, put them in your own templates, whatever. Hopefully, they will help. I also added a snort signature to the post. The snort signature is in the works for me state of quality control and feedback is welcome. And thanks to those who noted the bad link in the show notes uh, should be fixed now and I hope I will get it right today. Zoom published a security update for Mac users. This privilege escalation vulnerability doesn't really sound like a huge deal, but shouldn't really be overlooked. It does allow attackers to bypass a lot of Apple's built-in security controls, not just escalate privileges to root. Now you wonder why, and that gets me to a blog post by Sector7 outlining how Apple's different security layers can be bypassed. This includes System Integrity Protection, or short SIP, which is sometimes also referred to as rootless, because even root does not have permission to alter certain files on the system, and processes are also somewhat isolated from each other and don't sort of automatically inherit all the privileges of the user running it. What a particular process is allowed to do is now regulated by entitlements that are assigned to an executable. And then you may sort of see these pop-ups where executables are asking for certain permissions uh, from the users. That's this entire TTC system that uh, Apple developed uh, for these privileges. But an ongoing weakness of the system is that uh, if an attacker has the ability to inject code into existing processes, then of course that code runs with whatever process, whatever privileges and entitlements uh, this particular executable already possesses. And Apple has been working on reducing this threat, but apparently this isn't easy and, well, they haven't eliminated all the issues yet. The latest such issue was covered by Sector 7 and it does take advantage of the saved state feature. If you shut down your Mac, you have the option to save the state of a running process. You may have seen that checkbox that basically asks, do you want to open the windows that you currently have open? And the intention here is that it makes it for a more seamless uh, experience. You can shut down your system when you start it back up. It starts uh, these uh, programs and it also loads in some cases the state of the program, like whatever documents and so you had open. Now, this is accomplished by actually setting up little files and developers have the ability to specify what should be saved in these files and then load it again as the process is started back up. And well, these files contain serialized objects. For some of you in particular, if you're doing web development, alarm bells may go off and I say serialized objects because serializing objects often means that they are then being deserialized as uh, they're read from the file and that often leads to code execution and that's sort of exactly what happens here if a developer isn't careful in how they're reading back these objects then it's possible if the attacker is able to manipulate these files to then execute code as the process is restored and one particular issue here is the macOS update assistant and how Zoom used it. The macOS update assistant has pretty much all the privileges, well, you could ever ask for, including the ability to bypass SIP because it has to 
write files all over the place. And this is exactly the problem that was exploitable here as you used Zoom, as Zoom sort of saved its state and interacted with the macOS update assistant. And this is now fixed in the latest Zoom update. Of course, Zoom is not necessarily the only software vulnerable here or capable of exploiting this. This is probably still sort of work in progress. Well, talking about work in progress and some other random updates, Microsoft blocked three insecure bootloaders. These UEFI bootloaders, they could be exploited to execute malicious code prior to Windows actually booting. Microsoft added them to its block list of bootloaders that are no longer loadable via secure boot. Bootloaders from Eurosoft UK, New Horizon Datasys, and Cryptware are affected here. We also got yet another update from HP Enterprise for its integrated lights out five. These are the sort of remote admin cards for your servers. Update them. It's always a critical thing to keep those hardware components up to date. Oh, and we also got some malicious PyPy packages, but well, not sure if that's news anymore. Well, that's it for today. So Thanks again for listening. Thanks for feedback. Please keep it coming. Let me know what's good, what's not so good about this podcast. And tell your friends, tell your enemies. I'm doing these because people are listening. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.